Hey guys, here's part one of my custom phantom build. So part one is going to be more of a overview of what I use in my custom phantom build. If you guys haven't seen my other video, I actually built, or I'm actually building a phantom from the ground up, and it's actually already, or I would say 90% done inside this case right now. So if you guys haven't seen my other video, yep, I'm just do a little quick uh, briefing up. I'm using the Nasa V2 flight controller. I'm using, or I'm installing the optional Zenmuse uh, H3 2D gimbal on there with my GoPro 3 Black Edition. I'm using my own transmitter, this is the Futaba 8FG, or the S Edition with the 14 channel. So it's actually all in one. I can actually control the tilt, I can adjust uh, remote gains on the dials if I have to, and I can pretty much ch put the flight mode GPS home lock on any switch I want on my radio. And also, I have a pretty cool case for uh, the Phantom after everything is all built. The case is available from TradeCraftCases.com. They have two different versions. Uh, they have a roller case, which you see here. Wheels on the bottom, so you can actually uh, lug it along, bring an airplane, bring it wherever you have to go, far distances. And very, very uh, little work, so you won't be so tired if you have to carry the case. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Here is my custom Phantom. So you can see I have a whole bunch of batteries. I'm using Thunder Power batteries. So let me start off with the batteries. You can use the stock batteries or any 3-cell 2200s, but these Thunder Power are actually 2700 milliamp hour batteries, and they're the same size uh, dimension as the stock battery, except they're about 10 grams heavier, which for me, 10 grams heavier, but you get another you know, additional 500 milliamp hours, so you can get anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute, two minutes extra flight time, so that's pretty cool, but you have to solder on your own connector. Very easy if you're building your own Phantom from the ground up. You can see my custom phantom right over here I pretty much started with just the bare frame I'm using the stock speed controls I'm using the sunny sky 2212 uh, brushes motors right here these are the 900 kV motors they work very good with the 9 inch repellers I'm getting about 7 minutes of flight time with uh, the thunder power battery so that's not too bad at all motors run good no signs of any problems so far I have about 10 flights with my phantom and it's actually flying pretty good. So you can see my wireless uh, FPV goggles set up. So I can see on the goggles or have a hook up to a monitor and see what the GoPro is seeing when I'm actually flying. I still need to mount the IOSD. Right now, there's no space left inside for me to uh, uh, mount the IOSD because the PMU and the GCU from the Zenmuse takes up all the space inside. DJI just released an upgrade. Uh, board kit for the Phantom so you'd be using you know well actually that board will eliminate the PMU and the GCU because it's all built into the board so I can save actually those two spaces the IOSD so hopefully that will be available soon uh, from what I heard end of the week so I still have to wait for that one <laughs> so here it is let me take the Phantom out and fold this case up or put the lid back down I'll show you guys a quick shot you can see here's my Phantom Sunny, for anybody who's interested, these are the Sunny Sky 2212 900 and KV motors. So you can purchase this from EPP Buddy or in anywhere over China. They're very cheap. They're a cheaper alternative to the stock motors, and these motors are actually uh, well balanced. I installed it. I didn't balance the motors or anything like that, and these motors work fantastic. I was able to fly in the sun with no jello at all, so that's very, very good. So actually, you can also feel the frame actually spooling up the motors by itself, and there's very, very little to no vibration. These props are actually 9-inch repellers, so they're 1 inch bigger than the stock plastic repellers, but they're very, very stiff. These are actually stiffer than majority of the propellers that I've, that I've tried out in the, you know, in the past. And they're thicker, they're heavier, but they're a lot stiffer, and that's what you want when you're carrying a lot of weight and when you're shooting you know any kind of video is if the props will flex they transfers that vibration down to the thing and you get this little you know jello effect so one thing about these props uh, these are actually from Territ they're claimed to be well balanced but when I got them all four was actually pretty bad so be prepared to use you know a propeller balancer to balance the propellers because you're definitely going to need it if you want uh, vibration free setup but you know like all propellers you want to you know balance balance it in a way so it's not that bad it takes about 10 minutes for all four 
or you can even do it quicker if you just want to rush through it. But you can see here, got a shot, battery compartment. I'll the part two is gonna be the internal, so be sure to you know wait for the next video, which I'll show you guys what's inside the shell, how I modded everything, how I made my own plate to mount everything in there. But you can see I'm just using uh, some carbon fiber uh, or some cheap carbon fiber uh, you know stickers right here just to put on the arms, put on the front right here, and also for the landing uh, legs right here. We can see I got the antennas for my uh, Futaba uh, receiver. So yeah, you know, up the very bottom you can see my Zen Moose camera gimbal. I put about 10 flights so far and this gimbal works fantastic. I got the LED module right out here. The reason why I put it outside for now is because I want to get access to the USB port. So, you know, I'm still tweaking the gains a little bit, getting it to fly just right. So by having the USB outside, it makes access, you know, it makes programming a little bit easier. Now a tip if you guys are, you know, installing the Zen Moose for the first time is when you install the Zen Moose, you know, make sure everything's all hooked up. Turn on your GoPro, hit record, then you plug in the battery to the Phantom. Reason why is because if you're, using the, if you're using the new firmware and you have everything all plugged in and you reach down and you actually accidentally move the gimbal a little bit, the Zenmus gimbal is going to go to hibernation mode to protect the motors from uh, you know stressing out and burning out these small little brushless or stepper motors. So make sure you have everything on and recording before you plug in the battery. I know it's a hassle, but the last thing you want to do is burn out these motors because this gimbal actually works by far. It's by far the best gimbal or best brushless gimbal that I've tried up to date. You know, it's pretty much no tuning, no setting up. You just plug in the wires, you know, power wire, hook up to your NASA, and it's ready to go. And it provides very, very good footage, which I'm not going to show you guys in this video. So, yes, I have to watch the next video that I'll be posting up. <laughs> so, yeah. This is a quick overview to part one, so stay tuned guys to for uh, part two, which I'll be posting the internals and how I put everything together. So if you guys are really interested, please uh, be sure to wait for that video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching guys.